Hey guys, it's Charlotte and today's video is going to be me decoding my own lyrics and basically doing like a line by line explanation of all of my lyrics for my new single One Hit Wonder. Make sure to stream it, download it, Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify, all the rest or you can just watch the video. My best Brazilian fan, Alec, asked me to do a video explaining the lyrics and everything. And honestly, this is something that I love talking about. I love going into depth about my songwriting and about my ideas and my concepts and everything I put into it because I really try to be clever and smart with my writing and stick with a concept. So this is gonna be so much fun for me to do. I'm so excited. Thank you again, Alec, for suggesting this. I am so excited to do the video for you guys. Okay, so Alec actually also added my lyrics onto Genius.com. Oh my gosh, I was so excited. I didn't even know I had like a lyric page up from my lyrics for Sucker For You. That was my other single. So the fact that it's now up for One Hit Wonder is just amazing. So you guys can sing along while you're listening. But yeah, some of the lyrics are repeated obviously like in the chorus. So we'll only go through that once. But um, here we go. So it starts out with verse one. And I guess before I get right into it, I wanna say, so the idea that I had behind the song was one hit wonder, obviously. The idea I had, the lyric just came to me. This just happens for me sometimes when I'm writing. I just had the idea. I wasn't even writing music, I was just standing. And I was like, oh my God, we were a one hit wonder. And I'm like, I loved it. It just came to me and I was like, I love that concept because first of all, there's humor in it. It's self-deprecative because it's like, I'm a singer, obviously, I'm a songwriter. Calling myself a one-hit wonder and having a song called One Hit Wonder is like, self-deprecative because you're kind of calling yourself a one-hit wonder and no one wants to be a one-hit wonder and if there's a language barrier for anyone and you're wondering what like one-hit wonder means basically it's like a song or an artist they usually call an artist a one-hit wonder when they only have one hit song and never another one that's basically the concept for the song so the first lyric i got in the whole song was we were a one-hit wonder that's like the opening of the chorus but that lyric led on to it being like about a relationship so that's kind of where i took the concept and i I took it from instead of it just being about an artist being a one-hit wonder because that wouldn't be that wouldn't be fun make it about a relationship so it's like they worked one time and not again so that's basically the concept I had writing the song and starting it out I had a melody for the chorus that was different um, for we were a one-hit wonder uh, the melody I have now obviously is we were a one-hit wonder before the melody for the chorus was like really boring I don't settle like when I I first get a melody I don't just settle on that and say okay yeah we'll keep that no it needs to be good it needs to be proper I find a lot in the industry and there's so much um, pressure for artists and for songwriters to pump out so many songs whereas for me I'd rather each song be good so you don't have to write a million and have one in a million be good you know I want each song to be well done so that's what I really do go into my writing and that's kind of my whole thought process so when I first started yeah, when I first had the melody, I can't even remember how it went. Oh, I remember it. We were a one hit one da 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 da. But yeah, it didn't pop. I didn't feel like it was good enough. Like it wasn't good enough. So I didn't keep that one, but that was the original. That was the original melody I had for it. But we didn't keep that, of course, as you guys can hear in the song. But that is basically like, I guess, an intro going into the song so you guys kind of understand the concept and just my thought process behind it. Verse one, the first lyric is, we were an overnight success, it was an accident. So that is kind of like, I love playing with words like that, especially when I have a concept like that. I feel like the lyric is pretty, um, it, you know, you know what it means, but basically they were an overnight success. So you can take it one of two ways. They worked that one day, that one night, and it, they didn't mean it to, you know, they didn't know they'd find each other and that it just worked and they hit it off. But it also, um, another kind of meaning, we were an overnight success. So kind of having, hinting some sexuality behind that, you know, what happens sometimes at night when two people are together. And then also, of course, it sticks with the concept of a one hit wonder because they always say like Justin Bieber, oh, he was an overnight success. Yeah, that's like the meaning behind that lyric. And then the next one is, is, I thought we were a perfect match, no strings attached. So honestly, this is a lyric 
and the song that I think is kind of lazy for me. I think it's a lazy lyric. I still like it and it was good enough for me to put it in because sometimes you can't, every lyric can't be conceptual. Sometimes it has to be explaining the story behind it. I like to have it so that it both explains the story and is conceptual. So for me, that lyric, it's kind of lazy. I thought we were a perfect match, no strings attached. It does rhyme well though. And um, basically, yeah, what it's saying is, oh yeah, like we were an overnight success. It was an accident. And then leading on to that, they were a perfect match because they both just wanted to have some fun, no strings attached. Um, so yeah, I guess it does explain like the situation and what I'm kind of trying to get across with the story. But I'm always hard on myself, you know, but I'm like a perfectionist when it comes to my writing. So I'm not the biggest fan of the lyric, but it sounds cute and nobody's perfect. So whatever. Next lyric, then we're moving on to the pre-chorus is, and this is the same in the first pre-chorus and the second pre-chorus. Sometimes I have like slight differentiations when it comes to pre-choruses, but this one stayed the same. It is. Okay. I love this lyric. This is my favorite lyric out of the whole song that I wrote. I love it so much. And I've been waiting for our next single. Are you single? Is this just millennial lingo? So, oh my God, I love this lyric. First of all, the phrasing, like when I sing it. And I've been waiting for our next single. Are you single? Is this just millennial lingo? Like it just phrases so well. And Crazy enough, it came together so quick for me. That's like a songwriter's dream when it all falls into place so quickly and so easily. Again, it is conceptual, sticking with the concept of this song, so clever, and okay, I just love it. I'll break it down piece by piece. So I've been waiting for our next single, play on words, like we've been waiting for the next song, like is it gonna be good? Cause that's what you're wondering about with these one hit wonder artists, you know? So, but basically what I mean by that in a relationship, I've been waiting for our next single, like I've been waiting for our next good time and like it's not coming yet really. There she's kind of just wondering, I'm waiting, you know, like waiting round. So yeah, I've been waiting for our next single, Are You Single? So of course it's using the word single but double meaning of it. So first meaning of single is obviously like a song single and then she's asking, are you single? Um, and then the next lyric, is this just millennial lingo? So. I, and these lyrics just came to me and I was so happy because it flows so good, it sounds so good. And what I love about it is, it's like taking back the term millennial because like being a millennial, they always try to use it as like a bad thing. But I feel like it's like taking back the term. I feel like the only time you ever hear millennial is when they're like millennials are ruining something. So I'm like, you know what? I'm a millennial. I'm going to take back the word. But literally it all just came to me. And if I had not wanted it, I when the lyric came to me, I would have just like thrown it away. But I'm like, no, honey, this is so perfect. Because what I mean by this as well is, is this just millennial lingo? Is her asking if he's single? Like nowadays relationships are a lot different when it was like way back when and people would always be exclusive with each other. So sometimes there's like blurred lines between people's relationship status. So the girl saying, or well me saying, is this just millennial lingo? Like you saying you're single, is that just, or you saying you're in a relationship? Like, is that really what it is? Or is that just like what us millennials call it, you know? So that's kind of like the play on words for that. Those lyrics, I just love. The phrasing is so good. And the melody came, it all came together. The lyric melody for that came together. And I love it because it's conceptual. I get like in a mind frame when I'm songwriting and it's like these lyrics or these melodies, words, they just like come out and I'm like, yes, when it's good, it's like, yeah. <laughs> when it's bad, then I'm like, okay, next one. Or like me, I keep the perfect match one in because I'm like, ugh. Okay, it's good. It's good enough. It's good enough. Okay, so yes, that's my lyric. Mom, the next lyric is only time will tell. So yeah, I've been waiting for our next single. Are you single? Is this just millennial lingo? Only time will tell. So she just sang, well, we'll see if you're single, if we're gonna work again, if it's just millennial lingo, we'll see in time. And then my next lyric, which I really like this lyric as well. Um, we used our best melodies, now it's just memories. So they're saying like, they use their best moves <laughs> in their first time or in their first um, day together. It worked really good. And then now it's just memories. Like they're not able to um, remake that success, remake that um, feeling, that moment that they had the first time. 
I just memories kind of in the past now. And then I say, oh well, oh well, oh well. Because the idea that I want for the song was for it to be carefree and not for it to be sad. I wanted it to be carefree and just like whatever, you know, like we used our best melodies, now it's just memories whatever oh well you know so yeah so that's the end of the free chorus and then um we go into the chorus which first lyric as i said is we were a one hit wonder which i already explained it means that they worked one time and not again and then i say you won't see us again on the charts so like on the billboard charts for example but it's like then i'm using that and switching it to a relationship like you won't you won't see them again doing well you won't see them hanging out you know and then a one hit wonder a song of the summer that no one will remember. So I love that lyric too. This one I'm really proud of. This song actually I'm really proud of. I had a lot of good conceptual lyrics in it that were just smart, clever. I'm really proud of it. Yeah, the lyric of song of the summer that no one will remember. So that's like how one hit wonders are. They have like one song and then it's like so popular and then no one really knows who they are again. So that's the idea behind that one. Song of the summer no one will remember. And the same about them, you know, they had this good time, this one fling and then they're kind of moved past it and it's not really gonna happen again. A one hit wonder. Yeah, and then like the, I guess, interlude or post-chorus after that, it's like synthesized, but it was actually a melody I created and then they just brought down my um, voice in the production. A song of the summer that no one will remember. A one hit wonder. And then it was a melody and this is how I sing it acoustic. I go, we were a one hit. A one hit wonder. We were a one hit. So if you guys listen, you can kind of hear the It's like synthesized down. Um, but it was actually me singing and they just synthesized it. So, and then we move on to the second verse. You were a feature on my track, a duet, a duet, let's do it. Basically, she's saying you were a feature on my track. Like, you know, like I was the one and you were just like coming in to hang out, you know, and they were doing a duet. So they were complimenting each other. They were working together. And then I do play on words, do it and then do it. So, you know, play on words. Like, sounds like the same thing, but you're using different words. Um, I feel bad for anyone listening to that when English isn't their native language, because that would get confusing. But I tried to make it clever in my own way. And then the next lyric for the second verse is, but baby, when it comes down to it, I'm a solo act. Uber! <laughs> so basically, yeah, you were a feature on my track, a duet, let's do it. But baby, when it comes down to it, I'm a solo act. She does better on her own. Like she's realizing like, you know what? Like it was good for that one song, that one time. But when it comes down to it, I'm better off just doing my own thing, chilling. I'm strong enough by myself. Yes, woman empowerment, male empowerment, whoever you are that's listening to it and relating. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's the lyric for that one. And then we go back into the pre-chorus. Oh, I should also say, I had lyrics before the pre-chorus because I had noticed a lot in um, like Taylor Swift, Look What You Made Me Do, a song by the script and a lot of recent pop songs, they were having like a little piece before the pre-chorus on the second verse. It would be a different melody, but it would still add to it. So I actually had different lyrics there. I had like an extra piece in there. Let me see if I can find it. I cut it out because it made the song too long and I guess didn't flow or whatever. Oh, and if I look here, I actually have my notes. I'm looking from when I was writing the song. Okay, we'll go over this at the end. Ooh. We're gonna get like more in depth with the song. This is gonna be fun. Okay, this is it. And we keep trying again, going along with the momentum, but we know it had to end. So that was a melody that I was gonna have and lyric. I ended up cutting it. And yeah, um, we keep trying again, going along with the momentum. Um, but at the, but at, I think it was like, but some time, but we know some time it had to end. So kind of like, when they try to ride out, you know, that single, that first one that was really good, they just keep trying to ride it out, but it can't last forever. You know, you have to put out another single, you have to do good again, you have to have a follow up. And I felt like it added to the lyric content as well because it's saying, you know, they keep trying to make it work and it's like not really working because they can't recreate what they already did. So um, I was gonna keep that lyric. We didn't end up keeping it, but that's okay. And then the bridge, which honestly, there's not much lyric content here, but we can still explain it. And it's just, we were a one hit, 
that was it. It was good while it lasted, but I'm over it. A one hit, that was it. It was good while it lasted. Lyrically, it's pretty self-explanatory here. We were one hit, so as I said, worked one time. That was it. It was good while it lasted, but I'm over it. You know, that's, and that's, again, how I wanted to keep, like, the carefree um, attitude of this song. Like, it was good, but, you know, whatever. I'm over it. Like, I'll find another is fine. You know, so it's like, they're over it. A one hit, that was it. It was good while it lasted. And I kind of like that, too, because saying, Kim, it was good while it lasted, and not saying, but I'm over it, is kind of giving a bit of apprehension, like, it was good while it lasted. Like, oh, it really was. And then goes into the chorus, and then kind of like a diss again. So, <laughs> basically, yeah, those are the lyrics. That's that's basically how it goes. I wrote, yeah, this song 100% myself. I did not produce it. It was produced by Neil Wide. They did amazing. They totally really created the kind of production and vibe I wanted behind it. So honestly, I'm so thankful for that. It sounds so good. I'm gonna read over my little notes that I had for the song. So this is when I was writing it. Sometimes I brainstorm. I don't do this always, but sometimes it helps, especially when I'm like kind of stuck or like feeling lazy about it. It helps to like plan it out. So here I had, this was September 25th, 2017. Oh my God, so that's around when I started writing it. I started writing it before then. I got the idea in May 2017. Um, yeah, May 2017. But when I really started writing it, I guess was September at 9.28 p.m. Wow. Um, and it says one hit wonder. And then I'll just read you out the notes I had. It was good while it lasted. You won't see us again on the charts. We keep trying again. Um, like it's some kind of and then going along with the momentum But at some point we had to end and then so a lot of these are lyrics I used or like Versions of what I want the lyrics to be and then I changed around the phrasing to make it proper um, Used our best melodies now. It's just memories we were a song of the summer that we can never repeat. So obviously what I did, song of the summer that no one will remember, but it gets across the same thing, just better rhyming. You weren't the one, even if we were a one hit wonder. So I didn't end up using that, but that was a cute little idea. And then I said, but do we have a follow up? So that was, I was kind of saying like, do we have another song, you know, to follow it up? I was thinking the same thing. Um, and then again, we were the song of the summer that no one can remember and then in brackets I had years down the road like will they remember <laughs> and then another lyric we were the song of the summer the last you'll hear from us overnight success they will call us the best and that I didn't keep that because it was way way too um too cheesy and then longevity and then I was waiting for our next single are you single is this just millennial lingo that one I didn't change at all because it's so good and then I have first verse is gonna be how they started out. So I kind of bring down like what I'm saying in each verse, um, how they started out, we were an overnight success. It was an accident. And then lyrics I had before is type of love you won't forget, no strings attached, but I changed it to we were a perfect match. And then I put revisit and then material. I don't know what that was. And then I had chorus, one hit wonder, cute concepts, and tie together. So I was basically telling myself my goals of what I want to do. Second verse, and I don't think I ended up um, using this idea. How it started going downhill, lost momentum, tries again but can't live up to what they were. Hype got in the way and glamorized their relationship when in reality it just didn't end up working. And then bridge, I have one hit, that was it, accepting their fate carefree and over it so that's why i kept with that for sure and oh i also want to say when i was writing the second verse <clears throat> i was on the plane on my way to montreal i knew that this was the song i wanted to record i wanted to have produced by neil wide and i actually wrote the second verse on the plane i was like having so much anxiety about it this was like before i was on my antidepressants like putting pressure on myself but i got lyrics on the plane and i really am proud of the second verse lyrics it didn't end up being the same kind of idea that I had written down here for the second verse, but I think that it gave it what it needed to and the diss with it being a solo act. So yeah, those are basically my little notes for the song. That is me decoding all of the lyrics in the song. And I guess you guys are gonna be like, who did she write it about? Um, I didn't actually go into this song and writing it, writing it about anyone. As I said, 
the lyric, um, we were a one hit wonder and the whole concept, it just came to me and it wasn't like about anybody. It was just the concept. Um, and then when I was recording it and doing the vocals, the manager of the producers was like, yeah, think about who you wrote it about, like what you're trying to get across with it when you're giving like the pronunciations and stuff. And I was thinking and I'm like, I didn't, I didn't write it about anyone, I just kind of got the concept, but to get into it, I tried to think about it, I'm like, well, who have I dated, who have I, like, been with that I can relate this most to, and there was one guy, we worked, I guess, one time, and then after that, it didn't really work, but, um, going into the song, I didn't write it about anyone specifically, it was only after the fact that the guy said that, but I was like, well, maybe I was, like, subconsciously writing it about him, I feel like that happens with a lot of, um, songs as well it like is subconscious coming out through your music it's like how no one will write the same the same concept the same way or the same idea the same way because everyone has their own experiences and their own taste level and their own vibe but yeah guys that, i hope that's fun for you i know that this is gonna be so long of me just talking about what is the inspiration and idea behind my lyrics and my melodies and kind of my songwriting process but uh, this is something I, I love talking about. I'm really proud of my art and my music and I put my all into it. I really hope that a label, you know, curators and everything and especially a label will really appreciate me and find me and like sign me <laughs> sometime soon because this is what I want to do for my career, write music and be an artist. So thank you Alex so much for actually asking and caring. I know Kinsey asked as well, like my inspiration behind the song and um, it means a lot because this is something I'm really proud of. I put a lot of effort into and it makes me so happy that you guys are curious and that you want to know. I love that. Seriously, guys, it means so much. So please keep streaming One Hit Wonder on repeat on Spotify. Keep it on repeat. Apple Music, keep it on repeat. Um, you can watch it on YouTube, as I said, too. Google Play, Deezer, whatever all the other ones are. Um, yeah. So I hope you guys like it. I'm so happy you love this song. If anyone is watching this and hasn't heard this song yet, I hope you love One Hit Wonder. Um, thank you for appreciating my art and my music. And I love you guys. And I can't wait to release my next song. My next song is um, going to be, again, fully written by me. All my songs are. But also, it will be fully produced by me as well. So it's going to be one step up because I get into production now. So I'm very excited for you guys to hear something that is 100% authentically me in every single way possible. Yes, so I hope you guys like it. Um, I'll see you next video and thanks again. I love you and I'm so happy you love my songs. Thank you, I love you guys. It means so much. Okay, bye.